Okay guys, so I'm going to teach you how to properly use the carburetor heat, okay? So, if you've gone through one of my ground schools, I'm very thorough with aircraft systems. So that way, when I say magneto or carburetor heat, you know exactly what that actually looks like inside the engine compartment and how it works, okay? So, just refresher, whenever I pull the carburetor heat, what, it, what that does is takes hot air from the exhaust and funnels it into the engine, okay? So why do we do that? Well, two things. We want to keep ice from forming, but also in case we do develop carburetor ice in the venturi of the carburetor, we want to pull carburetor heat and burn, melt that ice up. Melt that ice up and uh, and when that happens, melts ice, turns into water, and it goes into your engine. So it's going to run really rough, but it's going to clean it up and you're going to be safe, okay? So it's just pretty much a safety issue. Uh, there's actually a fellow in Wichita Falls that got killed in uh, using or had carburetor ice developed into a traffic pattern. He lost his engine and uh, it was a fatality accident. And that happens a lot. And carburetor ice isn't anything to worry about as long as you know how to recognize it and how to correct the issue. A lot of people don't know how to rec recognize the issue and by the time it gets to the point where the engine's shut down, it's too late, you can't do anything else, okay? So really simple, there's a little chart. If it's between 20 degrees Fahrenheit and 70 degrees Fahrenheit and you, read, and you run a reduced RPM, so it's outside or below the, the green arc, the normal cruising, uh, RPM range, then you want to use carburetor heat, okay? So if I'm flying around, uh, maybe I just want to do slow flight, okay? So I want to run 2100 RPM, okay? I, w I want to go ahead and pull carburetor heat, okay? Because that's that's in the area which is most common to pick up carburetor ice, okay? Or if I want to do a descent, okay? So maybe I'm doing 2300 RPM and I want to descend from, we're at 4500 feet today. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the power back to a slow RPM and allow the airplane that's going to want to descend on its own and I want to pull carburetor heat. So that way I have hot air going through that uh, carburetor and it's not going to allow any carburetor, carburetor ice to form. Okay, So this is also a perfect scenario to where you're in the traffic pattern and uh, we're turning on base or um, we're you know, base funnel or anywhere to where you're running a reduced RPM, you want to pull that carburetor heat and get that hot air going in the engine and then that way you won't have any risk of picking up carburetor ice. Uh, carburetor ice. So me personally, I've, I've uh, considered myself a high time pilot. I've never had an issue with carburetor ice forming, um, but I probably relate that solely to I've been using the correct uh, carburetor, carburetor heat uh, inputs throughout all the phases of flight, okay? Also one thing I want to talk about is how do you recognize carburetor heat? That's the first and most important thing, okay? So I'm going to push this in, we're going to level off 4,000 feet. Okay, so we're level at 2300 RPM today. So how do we recognize that we pick up carburetor uh, ice? Well, if we have the power set, okay, and then we look back a, a few minutes later and we notice that the RPM has dropped down to 2200 RPM, what happens is that carburetor ice is building up inside the venturi of the carburetor and restricting the airflow, okay? So it's choking off uh, the power to the engine. It's kind of like squeezing your throat, kind of choking you. Alright, so if we look up and we're at 2200 RPM and then we push the power back into 2300 RPM, we look back a little bit later, it's back down to 22 or 2100 RPM. So we push the power back up to 2300 RPM. Before too long, we're going to be at full power and we're only going to be getting maybe 2100 RPM. That's a perfect example of carburetor ice. If you recognize that, go ahead and pull the carburetor heat. Funnel that hot air into the engine and melt that ice out before it's too late, okay? Also, it's say if I'm flying along, and we've all been there, to where we're on a solo cross country, we're just starting out, okay, we're at 2300 RPM. We look back, and next thing you know, we're at 2200 RPM. Well, it could have been just the throttle kind of worked its way out, you know. So we go back in with it, you know. And then you might get paranoid. It's not going to hurt anything just to pull the carburetor heat and just run it for one to two minutes, okay? Push it back in. It was probably nothing. It's probably just the throttle getting worked out just a little bit, but it's not going to harm anything to just pull the carburetor heat and uh, run the engine like that for a couple of minutes, okay? All right, so that's my carburetor heat video. Hope that clears up a lot of issues you guys might have. So talk to you later.